Welcome, everyone, to Be the Change, Conversations with Visionary Women. I'm Tamara Hurl, and I am on a mission to create a movement of visionary women who are ready to help humanity recreate itself and, you know, just transform those things in the world that, that aren't really working so well. And today, I'm really excited to have Polly Hersey with us. And let me tell you a little bit about her. So Polly is a business design mentor, and she works with the energies at the heart of each enterprise to truly create conscious, forward-thinking ventures. If we change our approach, she says, businesses can be a big part of the solution to our current challenges. The changes that, that we need to make include a different relationship with nature. She believes if we choose to stop and listen, nature can help us create new ways of living and working in harmony with our natural environment and business can be rewilded. Polly guides entrepreneurs to work with the natural life force and energies of their businesses to uncover their true potential as change creators. Polly passionate believes, passionately believes that intuitive wisdom is the hallmark of future businesses and she's working to help entrepreneurs hone and tone their intuitive wisdom within business life. So Polly, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's, I'm thrilled to be here. It's, uh, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Me too. So, you know, I, I talked a little bit about your, your visionary project, but tell us a little bit more, anything else that you'd like to share about your visionary pro program or project? Well, I th just a little bit of background, really, as to, to, to why I feel it's so important, because I think we've become so, uh, our society, our cultures, actually, our, our predominant cultures have become so disconnected from ourselves and so disconnected from our natural environment that I think people are feeling so lost. Uh, and yet we're, I feel that we're at this crossroads where now is the time where we can actually, I like critical mass is building, and it's a time when, change can become reality, not just a desired state. Uh, and so I, I, it's kind of, we're kind of there and I feel like our relationship with the natural world has such an important part to play in how we reshape where we're going and give ourselves the best possible chance. So rewilding business is something that sort of like emerged slowly and, and, and in pieces, but because I've always been passionately interested in the environment, but it was always on the side. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't part, so it was business and then there's the environment and they were not, not the same thing. And But we're, we're ready to change that now, I think. Mm, wonderful, definitely. So how did, so I, you're kind of saying that um, they, they seem separate, business and the environment. And is that kind of how your vision was born or were there other things that played into it? I think actually my vision was born out of seeing the, or state of relationship between business and the environment. I mean, it because, and I, it was more about digging underneath though the the reality of what business is to understand how it was contributing. So I spent a lot of time deconstructing the principles and the systems of business and thinking about, you know, how, how is that playing out in our culture? How is that playing out in how we're treating each other, how we perceive life and how we engage with life? So it's been a very slow burn of sort of like saying, I'm not, when I first started my business, um, I knew that I'd having come from a charity background, uh, nonprofits, that I knew that I wanted to be working with people who had a cause, not people who just wanted to make a quick buck. Mm -hmm. So that was really important to me, but it, it's sort of that consciousness of wanting to contribute is the was the, always the starting block. And what I've learned is that conscious entrepreneurs have this, as you do, have this vision of being able to effect change, mm -hmm. not just for themselves, not just for where they are in the moment, but really affect change for all of us and yet we can feel so small don't we you know because we're just one person in this humongous system and when you look at business particularly big business there is so much perceived power in it mm. that and and what I was finding when I started working with um, entrepreneurs and online entrepreneurs particularly 
was a, there was so such a weight of this is the way to do it this is the only way to do it but when you stop to un unpick those systems and those thinking the thinking that underpins those systems you go this is exploitation this is manipulation it's just it's none of it was honest and true and that's so difficult for entrepreneurs who want to make a difference I mean and they, they were having to use these systems to grow their businesses to get them to the point where they could make a change but actually they were contributing to the persistence of the old system mm. and it just becomes untenable and you just go if you want to create change you need new systems you need new tools you need new thinking so the last few years in my business have really been focused on undoing all of that thinking highlighting where that thinking is so something as simple as a concept that you might apply in a business they're going well think about how this is what the thinking behind this is and I think a really good example that some people might be aware of is, is the term tripwire and if you actually think about where that's originated from it's a military term it's an ambush term and you think do I want that energy in my business I don't so I was able to so I think the, the, about three four years ago four years ago I think I said okay let's unpick all of these things and once I unpicked them then it was like then there was this space to say okay so now what you get to a point you can un, you can deconstruct for only so long and then you have to create mm -hmm. um so it's like what are you going to create instead so that's what I've been working on is like how do we create something different mm. yeah I love that that's that's beautiful and I I love the your example of the tripwire I know a friend of mine told me um I was talking about deadline and he said do you know where that phrase comes from and it comes from the civil war and you know there was a line that you couldn't cross and if because if you did then they they would shoot at you so it is really interesting to think mm. about the energy behind these phrases that we use in business definitely yeah a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of energy wrapped up in our language <laughs> definitely so in the course of helping um people unlearn these concepts that are not helpful for business what was one of the biggest challenges that you faced and how did you overcome it well I wouldn't say I've necessarily overcome it because I think to me the biggest challenge is always ourselves because we're part of a social structure and we want to belong and we want to be accepted so every time you become somebody who wants to go off course or or, or, or lead people in a different direction you have to overcome your own self-doubt you have to lean into your own trust more you know, you've got to listen to your own inner authority and say yeah I'm going to trust that I'm going to go with it even though my nervous system might be telling me not to or my various things that you know or subconscious issues that you might we all have are saying <laughs> Don't, do, don't go there or you know what if uh, am I good enough or all of those things so I I honestly think the biggest challenge we all face when we're in working on creating change is how do we reshape our perspectives on ourselves mm -hmm. and relearn different ways of behaving so am I past that absolutely not <laughs> I think it's a work in progress and always probably will be but that is certainly the challenge I see in my clients as well is that it's like how do I step away from that how do I give myself permission to listen to my intuition how do I listen to listen to myself outside of all that noise and particularly when you have maybe friends or family or a circle around you that are very much invested in old ways of thinking about what is it what does it mean to be successful for example then there's a lot of pressure that gets put on you to uh, to to conform in some way shape shape so that to me has been one of the the things that I've learned to be observant about and learned to observe in others as well mm, yeah and I love what you're saying about it being an an ongoing process that yeah. makes a lot of sense well so as you continue to um to do the wonderful work that you're doing how do you see your vision unfolding and expanding in the future? This is, the, <laughs> there's the piece that I don't know, but I can feel. 
And that's the piece that I've really been leaning into this year. And that is that I don't just think, I, I personally think that conscious business, so we've gone through this, I'll rewind a little bit actually. We've gone through this whole thing of environmental, um, God, I can't remember, sustainability and then being environmentally conscious. And that a lot of, there's so much greenwashing that goes on with that. So it's very hard to know what, what's going on. But underpinning all of that is this idea of do no harm. And for me, that does, does just doesn't go far enough. Do no harm is a neutral state. For me, businesses need to be actively contributing to the life force of this planet. And what does that mean? That means that businesses become part of the ecosystem. Mm. How does that happen? Well, this is where, coming back to the question about challenges, this is the question, you know, I've got to lean into that because it's something I can sense and feel, but I don't know how. And I think that there's a there's a wonderful YouTube video by da Daniel Schmachtenberger, and I can't remember the title of it, but it's basically about, I think it's called Phase Shifts in Humanity. And he talks extensively there about how when we're on the cusp of change, we don't know what is on the other side of it because it's not what we know. It's what we don't know. Mm. So I've been leaning into that thinking about how do I, how do I expand this? How do I allow people a way to integrate their businesses into the environment. And what I realized, you know, relatively recently is that it begins with listening. It begins with listening to nature and reshaping our relationship with it because we've always, we've got these cultures that we are above and separate from nature. And that breeds with it a certain degree of arrogance at a cultural level that we know best and we know everything, but you can't know everything. When we scientifically explore the environment, we do so by zooming in. But there is this massive network that we're beginning to see glimpses of where everything is in communication. So if we listen, then we have a way to start thinking about how does my business contribute to the ecosystem? How is it part of the life systems? And there, I think that one of the most profound ways that we can begin to do that is that every entrepreneur can connect with their real soul calling that the thing that pulls them forward the thing that they are here to do that they know that they're here to do not the thing that they think that they should be doing because when I think when you are in that space of really truly honoring yourself then you find your note if you like in the harmony and you start to see how you're contributing to a state of balance or, you know, resonance or harmonic or whatever, however you want to phrase it. You understand how you're contributing to that. Then when you understand that, you're understanding what your role is in the ecosystem. One of the things that I reference a lot is the elements, because to me, they are a particular creative force. and every business has a particular role so maybe that's a something that builds systems or maybe it's something that activates people to want change but we've all got those leanings that we have just as all different animals or plants in an ecosystem have a role to play in cultivating that ecosystem so that's kind of you know it's unknown territory and kind of very exciting to explore when i don't know what's coming <laughs> I love that you're leaning into that, even though you don't know where it's going to take you. That's beautiful. And I, I love what you said about, um, you know, people need to find their, you said people need to ask themselves um, the question, how does my business contribute to the ecosystem? So let's say that a person has figured that out and they, and they have this incredible idea, but they feel overwhelmed or like they're not sure where to start um, what suggestions would you give someone who's at that point? 
uh, I think the, from my experience, the most important thing is to connect to the thing that pulls you forward, because otherwise it can just be like this massive, overwhelming thing. So and it's easy and it's a bit of a platitude to say, just take one step because in which direction you, you just don't know. So what I've found is that when people are very clear on why they think something matters, then they can form an opinion on it. And when they form their opinion on it, they find their voice. And when they find their voice, all of a sudden they start talking about this. And that's when the connections fire. That's when people say, oh, yes, I get it. Or, oh, that's really interesting. That set something off and, and I've got this. And then all of the doors start to open. So instead of thinking, I have to know what step to take, get connected to it so much so that you can't not talk about it. You can't not share that energy. And then the opportunities will open themselves up. I love that. It's so connected, you can't not talk about it. Yeah. I'm curious if you have any special upcoming events that you'd like to tell us about. I, I have an ongoing membership, which is on Rewilding Business, where we are exploring different themes every season. So we're working through each of the seasons and saying, like, for example, it's June now. So summer's coming up um, and summer is very much associated with this process of finding your voice uh, and, and tapping into the energy that comes from within to effect change. Um, so the, the membership is is going to become um, like the hub of this movement for me. And so I've got lots of events. So we have uh, we have events at every solstice, every equinox, but also events marking all of the cross quarter days as well. So that there is a, we're connected into the seasons, we're connected into the cycle, we're connected into the patterns of nature. And that means that we can change our rhythm in business. So, you know, they've got lots of events coming up um, yes. that people will be very welcome to come and look at and explore. Wonderful. And where can people find out more about uh, the membership? That's available on my website. Which yeah. can, with, uh, can you say? Yep, yes, it's, it's just polyhearsy.co.uk. Awesome. It's straightforward. Beautiful. Question. You were talking about greenwashing earlier, and I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about that. I'm not sure what that what you mean by that. Okay, so there is um, because the environment has become an important consumer issue. I think a lot of businesses have found ways to make things feel or look or sound environmentally conscious when they when you dig below the surface, they aren't. Um, I mean, there are, there's on the fashion front, for example, there's there's um, a French fashion critic, which is just, I don't know exactly what you call herself. And she talks about how, um, for example, conscious cotton isn't really or um, there, there are so many things that are labels that are put on things that make us feel better about how we're acting but when you dig underneath it they're really not um i could get very controversial but electric cars for the sake of argument um whilst they are great on emissions in particularly in urban areas what we're not hearing is about is the carbon footprint of creating an electric car nor are we talking about the environmental impact of all these batteries so, for example, Chile is just about to renationalize the lithium mines because lithium is about to become the most national, the, the internationally valuable resource because we need all of these batteries. Um, but what is the cost of those of getting that lithium out of the ground and into the cars when it can't? Those batteries can't be recycled. So that's kind of what I mean. It's like we need to dig underneath it. So uh, and then another one might be on the health front, uh, coconut oil. We've got this coconut oil is healthy to eat and everything. But what most people don't know is that particularly in Thailand, 
monkeys are abused horribly because they are forced to pick a thousand coconuts a day for our coconut will have it. So there's lots of things to do. Now, I, I think it's, I'm referencing those, but I think it's important to say that I, my role in change I've come to see is not to be an activist. There are plenty of activists out there who are extremely good at it, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't be really quite well informed on some of the on the choices I make and that's something I I would really encourage people to do is when you when you want to create change of any sort you really have to lean into your values and then make sure that you're solid on your values in every aspect so I bang on and on about um values in business because they are what are going to shape the future of business and how we relate to our customers, how we relate to the world in general through our business. We have to have those values. Really, really important. Definitely. Thank you so much for, for expanding on that. That's right. So Mari, I am wondering if you, um, thank you for being so patient with listening. I'm wondering if you have questions that you would like to ask. Well, thank you. I was just witnessing and um, I don't feel there is any question, but I could relate to so much that Polly was saying um, about how we can make an impact to our business. Even um, it, it's about really being very clear where you come from. I think that's the essence of everything, because if we want to expand and make an impact in the world around us, we have to go as deep within us to ground that impact within before you can have a ripple effect on the outside um, and when it comes to environmental um, impact and change um, and nature and everything I think you, just by changing or not changing but affecting the consciousness of people that you work with and help them to see things differently that's how they can impact you know nature and uh, that's how it works because in in my case i work with people to uh, help them find inner peace inner balance congruence within themselves so when they find that obviously that will affect everything in their life and their environment including nature so it's all all starts from me so i could totally resonate i don't know i can't think of any questions at this moment um, because Polly is always very articulate, very clear, and she explains so well. So it's beautiful to listen to her. Well, thank you so much for um, sharing your thoughts. I, I really appreciate that. And, you know, I really agree with, with what you're saying. I always tell people, if you're bothered by something around you in the world, there's a reason. It's a message from the universe. And the universe is saying, don't just complain. You were born to help these things change. And that's why I'm having com these conversations with you, both of you. And that's why I'm so grateful that both of you are here. And if you would like to continue exploring this, I invite you to join my Facebook group. It's called Spiritually Anchored Visionary Women. Um, it's a place where we can connect and share ideas and support each other. You know, it's just so wonderful to be able to have a tribe of people who understand and are also passionate about helping things change. You can also reach out to me at my website, which is thewilddivine.us. So feel free to contact me there. And I would just like to thank both of you so much for being here today, for um, doing the work that you do. You know, we're, we're making the world a better place, uh, one person at a time one day at a time absolutely 